Hey gay, welcome to my crazy little channel. What am I doing for you guys today? Today, I'm starting off by showing you this beautiful paper collection. It's a Stampin' Up, but before you switch off, because I said that, I don't sell it. I just bought it. Um, I'm sure you can find somebody that would that is a local seller. Um, I'm not promoting that I sell it. I don't. But I saw this page and this paper collection and wow, it screamed me. It was, at the moment, I'm very much, I love florals and I love rainbows and it combined the both. So I was stoked, absolutely stoked. Um, I catch up with some ladies every so often and one of them happens to be a Stampin' Up! distributor and I love it. Okay, so these love hearts, this isn't a cut file you can buy from somewhere. I just made this on my Cricut myself. And what I did was I put the love heart shapes on there and then I created a 0.83 millimeter offset, cut the hearts out. This is a Paige Evans cut file, My Happy Place. You can get that from her Etsy store. And in case you haven't already worked it out, I'm doing a double page layout. Now, I have had this idea in my head to do this double page layout for ages. Mainly because I want, I just love the fringing. And I finally, this week, bit the bullet and bought myself a pair of fringing scissors. And I absolutely loved them and I think I think you'll be really happy with the result as well so I got my scissors from Spotlight they have restocked if you're in my area and they've got a whole it looks like they're going down a bit of a Fisker's resurgence of all their cut their um their trimmers blah 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 so I even leave this bit in I go to do that and then realize what was I thinking I was going to glue the um, the cut file straight on to the paper and then realized that's not how I wanted to do it. So I've left the mistake in there. Why? Because we all make them and that's just life. So I have sped this up eight times. Okay. This literally took me all day. I started this. I did a voiceover like I always do at about 8.30 in the morning. And then I sat down, I did my voiceover, I loaded up my video and I started. And it took me all day. I mean, I was still finishing it off at 5.30 in the afternoon. Obviously I had to go and pick up kids in the meantime and all that sort of stuff. But it took me a while and I'm really not sure why. But I guess because I've... I, I had never used fringing scissors before, and I apologize for this being so down, so so low down. There, I notice and realize that I'm too far down. It's really hard to do this when you're focusing on what's in your hands, as opposed to what the camera can see. So, these scissors, when I first started with them, I was trying to be meticulous with it. They literally, if you go the direction that I'm doing it now, so much easier. When you come back the other way and go the other way, it's a little bit harder. It sort of twists it a bit more. Anyway, so this is where you can see my brain working really hard. I wanted to do fringing behind, behind the picture, behind the, the cut file. But I did this and I turned it around and it, it didn't look right. Okay, now I'm off screen. Give me a second. What I actually do in today's video is I do a bit of zooming in and zooming out because this particular video, yeah, see, it wasn't working. I was doing it wrong. So then I changed my plan. I thought, no, I'm going to fringe all my hearts 
Now, I did also work out a bit of a hiccup with this. Now, this is in speedy time, but I worked out that the liquid glue was not the answer for the entire thing. It just got way too sticky and way too messy. So I laid down strips of, I just use one eighth of an inch tape. I buy mine from Spotlight. I buy it in a pack and it's about $13, $14 a pack. Um, I think there's about 12 or 13 rolls in it and it comes in varying sizes. I use, I used to use that for all my scrapping, but I've gone to a tape runner because it looks neater on, it looks easier on video. Okay. So this is where I was having a learning curve. So I put that to the side, kept going and I thought, right, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the fringing in all different directions on my hearts. So what I'm doing here is when I run the clear stamping block, I use that to cut, I use it to press down to tear my double-sided tape plumb to where I want it to finish. That's a little trick I saw a million years ago and it's genius. Now, the other thing that I figured out is See how I just ran a bit of glue around the edge of the curved edge? You need to do that because otherwise they let go. Okay, here I zoom in a bit for you so you can see a little bit closer up what I'm actually doing in Mega Fast Forward. See how I'm adding the glue up the side? You need to do that. Otherwise, when you trim the edge, you sort of lose one or two extra bits off the edge. You'll see it later on. I left it in, but this is so you can um, see it firsthand. I don't know if it's this one that I lose them. Hang on, I'm doing it off camera. This is because I've zoomed in so far. Okay, so I'm just going, so all I do is put the fringe on and then trim around the edge and then bingo, my heart is, See just there, I know it's low. See just there, see how I've lost those couple of bits off the end and it just didn't look quite right for me. So I, I literally went back and this is what took the time. I went back and reattached some extra pieces to make sure that the line went the full way across the heart. It just, especially, it, it stuck out the most on the watercolour pieces that were they were varying in in um, tone but they sort of read as a solid when you cut them like that okay now I've gone ahead I did do it off camera I thought I'd press play but I didn't all I did was I traced the letters and I just cut them out a slight uh, the slightest bit wider than where I had traced and bingo they just all popped on I wish it was this quick in real life but it was quick but you know this is a bit this is sped up so what else did I use now the paper I'm using is called Hues of Happiness and that's from Stampin' Up! AU um so far and then I used okay here's where I zoom out now you can see how cluttered my desk is you can see where I work with all my stuff just off to the left up to the right and the reason I have my mat there okay so I just ripped I can't believe I just did that <laughs> I had those hearts joined together and then I was so disheartened because I had been going for so long at this point but it's okay. I glued it back together and it's fine. You don't even notice it. Not even up close. You don't notice it. So now what am I doing here? So here I'm just showing you. So I zoomed out so you could see both the pages side by side. Now I was just adding my hearts. At the moment you're sort of looking at it going, mm, okay, it's coming together. Seriously, I get an email notification every time I try and do a video. 
and I do a voiceover. So annoying. Okay, so my photos are two by two. I cut them down to be two by two. Why? Because what I'm actually scrapbooking is some of the things my daughter loves to do as a gymnast. She is absolutely amazing. She is doing so well. What you can see here, this is how I store all my distress inks. They're in a tray. There's three trays and I have them in the order of my swatches. And that's how I pick. I left that in so you could see how I've worked out what colors to use. Okay, so pulled a heap of brushes out and I thought, right, I'm just going to... So these are the hearts that are backing onto the paper. So they're the ones that are behind. Now, what I wanted to do was add color around the edge, but obviously not the whole thing. So I'm going through, I'm using worn lipstick and this at the moment is worn lipstick. Maybe it's, yeah, or picked raspberry. I can't really tell. Um, I used both. Okay, so this one's picked raspberry. The other one was worn lipstick. I wanted to do slightly different pinks because if you can, if you look in the papers, they're slightly different. They're not, because it's a watercolor, so they vary. So then I went through and I actually used fossilized amber because it was a little bit more dull. It's more subdued rather than bright like mustard seed or squeezed lemon. So this is where I go through and I'm just adding color, still just playing with the concept of how much color to add. I know at this point that I definitely want to add some color to the background. I know it's, this needs, this just needs to be all about, um, I want this to be lots of color, but purposeful color. Because Jen's journey in gymnastics through COVID has not been easy, let me tell you. But her journey has been quick. She has excelled so quickly. And we're about to head into the comp season for 2022. Starting next weekend, we have our first comp. And she's peaking right at the right time. However... She's woken up this morning and I think she's got the flu. So she's home from school today, which is not ideal, especially on a training day, but got to take the good with the bad. You got to weigh it up. Sometimes kids get sick. So this is where I want to add. So I'm adding a bit of salvage patina. I have not primed or prepped this paper in any way. It is American Crafts white textured cardstock. I've trimmed it to 11 and a half by 12 and that's all I've done. So when you see me coming through and I'm mopping up a little bit of the liquid, that's because I don't want warping. There's so much going on on this page. I pointed to the green there because I was considering adding some green but I love green. I really do. I don't have a phobia about it. I don't have an issue with it. But this didn't scream like a green layout. So now I'm just adding some splatters because I don't want to waste the ink that's on, on my piece of plastic. So I just added some splatters on there. Now I'm trying, I wanted the yellow on here. But again, I wanted it in a purposeful way. See how the, I actually combined the two, the fossilized amber and the mustard seed. And see how it's bright, but like it's yellow, it's bright, but it's not in your face bright. So I just made sure that was dry before I tried to stick these down. I did use wet glue to stick them down because it is over mixed media and who knows what the tape's going to do in five years time. So 
uh, I added it. Now what you can see here is I'm actually gluing the hearts down and I'm, this turns out to be a pain in the neck, but I love the look. So at the moment now I've got a 11, what have I got? 12 inches by 23 inch, one giant long piece. I have to cut it. Herein lies the problem. So I'm just adding foam behind my title and raising that up a little bit so that the photos can sit in there better. And it allows the words to sit over the top of the texture from the fringing on the hearts. That's all good. I glue these down. Yes, I'm, I'm back to using my art glitter glue, my favorite. Okay, so I'm done with the ink. I'm not adding any more to it. I did consider it, but I stopped because sometimes you just, less is more. Now I'm backing these photos because I printed these photos larger and I wanted to sort of create thumbnails, if that makes sense, slightly larger. And it's just all the different positions Jen was doing this particular day on the trampoline. We have a trampoline and um, she uses it to practice getting her form right and to get her each position correct. Because as a gymnast, I'll just let you know, as a gymnast, muscle memory is everything. If you continually practice something and you're not quite getting it right, eventually that becomes your right because you keep doing it the same way. So you have to push yourself through the uncomfortable or what feels really awkward. I have no clue how my daughter does half the stuff she does, but she's actually in the process of learning something called a soul circle. Any... <laughs> Tell me you're a gymnastics parent without telling me you're a gymnastics parent, right? Um, so she's practicing a soul circle and it blows my mind that she can even do it. I just, oh, it, it, it freaks me out, but it gets me excited at the same time. And I panic for her, but she just, she keeps practicing it. She's going to get it. Okay, so it's at this point I did cut out the little bit in between because when I cut through the center and separated those hearts, I bet you can't guess what happened. A heap of those little tiny fringe bits fell off. So I then had to sit there painstakingly through the rubble that was in front of me and add them back on so that the hearts come together properly and they looked finished and not disheveled. Been there, done that, not a problem. I'm now using my black Posca pen. It's my, one of my favorites. It is my 0.7 millimeter and I'm just doing a, it's a squiggly border, but every so often you just cut color in different bits of black, but just some wider, some smaller, um, and I actually learned this technique from a lady. She's on YouTube and her name is, her title is Cat Hand, C-A-T-H-A-N-D. And I actually learned how to do that from watching some of her mixed media. Um, what are they called? Mixed media morsels. That's what, I, that's what it was. And she taught me how to do this. And so that's where I got that idea from. So thank you, Kat, for teaching me that years. I mean, I'm talking years ago, but still credit where credit's due. Am I right, girls and guys? But always got to add credit where credit is due. So now I'm just going along inside. Not really. It's not really a shadow situation. It's kind of. I'm just really doing lines and dots around inside just to sort of create a little bit of depth and I felt it needed a little bit more black. I'm still procrastinating over whether I should put some 
black nouveau drops on this page let me know if you think i should add some and i'm thinking i just need a few now i normally don't do my journaling on camera i usually save that for after i've taken all my photos because that's private but i wanted to do it on here not for any reason other than i needed to add some more black to it before i considered doing the nouveau drops so that's why I've done it this way and you can see. So see it added that extra bit of black on there and that's why I stopped. But I don't know, what do you reckon? Here's the close up. If you've stuck with me this long, thank you so, so very much. And if you haven't already subscribed, I would love to have some new subscribers and that will help me get out my videos to other people and people that may want to learn how to do the fringing, um, the pitfalls of fringing. <laughs> um, either way, I would love, and, I, and my current subscribers, I absolutely adore each and every one of you and all the comments that you leave me. It is fantastic. Thank you so much. It gives me such joy. Thank you very much. And I will be back with you with another video tomorrow. Thanks very much, guys. Bye.